Okay, so my favorite thing about all this crap is that outsiders and marginalized minorities drive artistic innovation. I think that's so cool, right? Maybe it's because I've always kind of been an outsider, or at least in my mind, right? Somebody, I've, never, I've never trusted the mainstream, right? The only mainstream thing that I like and trust is Harry Potter for some reason, right? It makes me feel really good that I like Harry Potter because A, I think it's good, and B, everyone loves it, and I like it too. Most things that everyone else likes, I don't like, um, sadly. Um, but so you've got these quote unquote marginalized people, people that are on the margin, people that don't quite fit in, and they got nothing to lose, right? Hip hop is the best example. So anybody seen this? All right, one person. That's, that's one more than most people. Okay, so pink flamingos. Um, that's divine, okay, a, a, a transvestite. Um, and if you can read up at the top, um, Daily Variety said that this is one of the most vile, stupid, and repulsive films ever made. Right? Would you attest to that? More than that. More than that. Okay. It's tough to watch. Um, and uh, you know, I won't go into why it's tough to watch, but maybe you can kind of pull from that photo up there why it might be tough to watch, although you really can't. Um, so anyway, the guy that made this movie was a guy named John Waters. Anybody heard of John Waters? A couple people. You may have heard of John Waters because of Hairspray, right? One of the longest running Broadway musicals. The New York Times calls Hairspray irresistible. If life were everything it should be, it would be more like Hairspray. I pull your attention back to this, okay? <laughs> the same guy made this. Parents across the nation are taking their little children to go see this, right? If you were to show a little child this, you would probably be locked up, all right? <laughs> The point is, John Waters, for those of you who don't know, grew up in the 50s in Baltimore as a gay man. Right? And he rounded up his uh, little troop of fellow misfits, right, Mary Travelers, and started making movies. Back in a time where there was no, you know, uh, DV, uh, what do you call it, um, little tiny tapes, DV tapes. It was expensive, and yet he found a way to do it. And he made the most bizarre movies in the world, right? And he started to grab a little niche. And he evolved and he developed. <laughs> 20, 30 years later, here he is. Now, I don't think very many people are going to Hairspray and going, you know what, I better check out the collective oeuvre of John Waters and going back to um, Pink Flamingos, right? And if they are, they, they are in for a rude awakening. But the trajectory is the same. Right? This is a minority that had nothing to lose. He was a gay man in the 50s. It's bad, right? What did he care? I'll do what I want to do. It happens that he has a particular type of genius. Right? It's interesting that he's from Baltimore, in the sense that Baltimore, in some ways, is still a place where outsiders are able to grab their little niche. I think of a lot of the hip hop that's coming out of Baltimore now. Right? A lot of the most interesting hip hop going is from Baltimore. And if you think of hip hop in general, these are people that literally have nothing to lose. Their life expectancy is probably 25 years, right? So they're going to make the art that they want. And the outsiders begin to get in. They have less at stake than the status quo, so they take chances, right? Taking chances results in making a differentiated product. Hey, I've never heard or seen anything like that before, right? And now, capitalism goes, you know what I can sell? Differentiated products. You know what people seem to think are cool? These outsiders. And these capitalists don't give a rat's ass if you are black, white, green, or purple. Because they can make money on you. If you go back to the patron system, and my example about the non-female composers, the reason there weren't non-female composers was because that the patrons thought females were of a lesser class. Okay? So they're certainly not going to invest in someone that's of a lesser class. There's no return there, psychologically or monetarily. The capitalists don't care. If I can make money off of you, what do I care what color you are? So you get someone like Jean-Michel Basquiat, right? A graffiti artist, an outsider. Okay, there's a great documentary on Basquiat you should check out. <laughs> this, I think, was bought by Lars Ulrich from Metallica. I know he's got some of his work for millions of dollars, okay? It's an outsider art. 
Metallica, believe it or not, as lame as they have become, at one point were outsiders and had a niche that was outside. The Black Album blew that all to hell. But at one point, they had their niche, and they were doing stuff that was differentiated. Metallica no longer makes music that is differentiated. I blame Bob Rock. No Metallica fans out there. Buena Vista Social Club. You talk about marginalized people. Okay, These are people living under a dictatorship. By all reports, Castro is going to come out of the deathbed and continue to rule, You know, and he'll be here with the cockroaches, I guess. But he is running that place with an iron fist. Ry Cooter had to go to Cuba and kind of, you know, surreptitiously make these records and then get these guys out. What do they have to lose? They're making the music that they like, that they want to. There was no financial imperative there. You know? So they do it this way. China is what you need to be watching because all of a sudden, these walls that were just like Cuba have started to come down. And there's already some differentiated product coming out of there, and it is very differentiated. Go check out some Chinese punk rock sometime. So the one thing you can't do, and this is where it starts to get dodgy, is stand still. And this goes back to the Metallica thing. Metallica's standing still. Lars is busy buying modern art. James is busy doing whatever it is James does, right? They're standing still. And so the market moves on. And so it's not about Metallica anymore. Right? It's about, I'm not as up as I should be on metal. Um, you know, it was Pantera, it was Slipknot, whoever. I don't know who, who the new kind of godhead metal band is. But it's certainly not Metallica. Right? And so their imminence starts to decline and the profits start to decline because the competition comes on. And then it's supposed to indulge, induce them to innovate again. We'll see. Metallica always says, this is a record that's getting us back to our roots, right? <laughs> U2 always says that too, right? This is the record. This is like, you know, war or October again. Sometimes they do it. Okay. <clears throat> 